Hey guys, it's John with Long Haul Lifesavers and today we have a special video for you featuring Johnny from Johnny's Journey. We're gonna go over what we carry on the road as a safety kit. If you guys haven't checked out Johnny's Journey, we're gonna drop a link to their channel in the description below. They got some awesome videos. You guys are gonna have a good time over there. I see you thinks that we purposely tangle wires and... <laughs> okay. Amazing! First collab ever! Success! Oh, woo -woo. We carry and so... Okay, when you hit the counter, it jiggles this. Okay. Don't hit Got the it. counter because you do that a lot. Yes, ma'am. I'm being rushed. <laughs> I don't do well when I'm rushed. Just going to throw that out there. The ER nurse doesn't do rushed. well under pressure. <laughs> Just more to edit. Keep going. So we're going to show you what we carry so that it might help you prepare for your first aid kit. First off, I have my wound bag. If somebody comes over and, and you know, they've got a minor cut or something, I grab this. I've got everything that I need to help doctor up that cut. Different kinds of gauze pads, some non-adhesive pads, some alcohol wipes, and some ointment. And then I grab my tape. Hand sanitizer, scissors. If it's nighttime, I've got a flashlight in there. Ice pack, this can be used for an ice pack or a heat pack. This obviously will go in the freezer. Real quick in a context, how mm -hmm. would you heat this or cool this in the field? Yeah, so in the field, I wouldn't, I, you know how they've got the ones that snap? That yeah. wouldn't. But if I'm in my van, that's, that is for the freezer. So I'll okay. basically have one or the other. But if I'm out on a camp and I don't want an ice pack, I can take that out. I can warm it up whether whether I put it in a pan, you know, near a fire or something, and I need heat to a wound or so, to, like a cold muscle or something like that, then I could heat that. Are these microwavable? And my, freezeable and microwavable. Okay, so, so you perfect. Could you can toss it in your microwave. I don't, right, right. And mostly for me, it, it will go in my freezer, and mm. that's my that's yeah. my plan for okay. it. But I don't know of a situation where I've ever needed a heat pack, but if I was out with someone and they needed a heat pack, we could we could warm that up. Um, the other thing I've got in here is actually um, was used on one of my kids, but it's a stabilizer. Like if you fall and break your wrist and you've got a deformity, I can mold this to the exact shape of the arm, put an ace wrap around it, and I've got your joint immobilized and you go off to the hospital. Medication wise, I've got a big mixture of stuff from swimmer's ear to Benadryl cream to burn ointment to cortisone cream, eye drops, a thermometer. I put a tweezer and some fingernail clippers in mine. We've got Tylenol, ibuprofen, and then just because of people out there with cardiac problems, I've got chewable aspirin, they're the 81 milligrams. I'll have them chew up for those real quick. And then this bag is really a hodgepodge of all different kinds of medicines, but I've got like laxatives, um, you go out, you're out there with diarrhea and you're going to wish you had something to stop that. Some uh, Pepto-Bismol, decongestants, motion sickness if you've got somebody that's car sick, some Toms, just basic medications like that. I do have a piece of some rope in my bag. I do have some waterproof matches in my bag, Ace Wrap, and then Coban is if you've got a um, somebody that's diaphoretic, they're, they're, they're real sweaty, you're not going to get tape to stick. Mm -hmm. Coban, you can wrap a wound with Coban. You can kind of stabilize a wrist with Coban. You don't want to get it too tight, but I always like having a roll of that. Yeah, you don't... it's nice because it adheres to itself. Yep. It doesn't actually adhere to the patient. Yeah, I think that's about it on my kid. Again, I made this specifically for what I thought I might need out in the field. You really have to make your kit for the medical problems that you have and then add basic first aid stuff yep. to it. Yep. I built my kit out to be mobile and to deal with anything that I was going to have to come across in the field. So anywhere from airways to stapling heads shut, doing sutures on the fly, lidocaine, a lot of stuff. So I have this built out as a search and rescue kit and I keep this in my truck all the time. A lot of times when you're in a situation you're going to need some form of medical kit mm -hmm. and it's always good to have something in your vehicle 
so that you're ready to grab this and go take care of someone, especially being Absolutely. a nurse. So, Johnny, what is yours built out for? So, well, mine is just literally very portable, everything grab and go. The container that I put mine in, obviously for anybody that's doing a van build or something, you're very limited on space. We have a lot of space here in my van. I have an attic space and this fits perfectly in it and I can grab and go. So like my kit is kind of for, you know, the worst of the worst, broken bones, split open skulls. What are you doing Correct. with this? My kit is really designed for basic first aid. Anything that, anything from um, major wounds to, you know, head injury and stuff like that, you need to seek medical attention mm -hmm. for. Yeah. Basic first aid. Mine is literally for the layman who knows nothing about healthcare, but needs to fix, you know, some cuts and scrapes, that kind of thing. My kit is just to stabilize them until medevac gets there, to take them to a hospital. And I'm going to be taking care of the person camp next door that comes over and asks for, you know, uh, they, they've got a cut or a burn yeah. or, you know, they need some, you know, minor medications. That's what my kit's for. The reason I went with this medic bag is a couple different reasons. It's a backpack, so it has backpack straps, but it's also a hiker bag, so it has the um, abdominal cinch as well. And then a lot of times when you're in the field, you come across mountain lions, bears, that kind of stuff. So these straps here, you can strap a sleeping bag to, but I strap a gun to it. Um, I don't go anywhere unless I'm packing. It's got to have that. And then it also has a lot of different compartments and it also has reflective. So if the medevac is trying to find us, I can shift this towards the sun and do a reflective SOS signal with this right. bag. So that's kind of why I went with this. That is pretty cool. Okay, so we went through Johnny's first aid kit, so now we're gonna kind of delve into mine. We'll work from the outside and then go in. Um, so like I said, the reason I like this bag is because I can put my rifle in here, cinch it down. We have our handy dandy bear spray. It's good for bears and for people. Uh, this front pocket here, this houses all of my gloves because mm -hmm. I don't want to touch people's dirty wounds or a split open head if I have to scoop their brains and put it back in their head. I want to have some gloves on my hands. <laughs> Along here, I have a pole socks, and a lot of times I don't have it. I ran out, I gave it to one of our friends when we went hiking, but I have supplemental O2 in a can. So a lot of times if their uh, SpO2 is low, I'll give them a couple doses of oxygen, um, and especially in high altitude, it's always a good thing to carry. Even when you're hiking, a lot of times I'll use my supplemental O2. So I like this bag because you can rip it open and then you got everything laying here. So a couple different things, flashlight. Sorry. Operator here, okay. Good. Um, so I have two sets of shears, thermometer, some Vaseline gauze. I do a bunch of IV start kits. So I make them out in kits so that if I have to, I can just grab one and throw it to my buddy and he can start a kit or an IV on another person. We have a, a CPR uh, mask um, because again, I don't want my mouth on your mouth. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have some kind of barrier. Um, so more IV start kits. I have a blood pressure, put it on your wrist and then, or on your wrist, and then it'll take your blood pressure. So I have two different types of sutures. I have internal and external. Again, suturing up a lot of big wounds. That's what this is based on is big wounds. Someone smashed their head into a rock. Um, so if you smash your head into a rock, I'm gonna staple your head shut and that's what these are. And I have a few of these in here. Um, oral airways, OPAs. Mm -hmm. This little kit um, has a lot of different stuff in it and I'm a nice unit, so I'm very OCD and organized. Flip this up without spilling it all out. Um, so I have a couple uh, rubber tourniquets, some aspirin, Benadryl tabs, burn cream and band-aids and then needles. So needles are not just for fluid. They're also if I have to puncture through your lung, if you have a collapsed lung puncture right through and uh, reinflate your lung. We got some nice. forceps, more scissors. The number one thing that I think everybody should have, even if it's just a general first aid, quick clot. Mm -hmm. um, so if you have a decent sized wound that you can't get sutured, you don't have sutures, you pack this into your wound and it's gonna stop that bleeding. Wow. I've never used it, but what they say, if you take two of these, you can stop your femoral artery from bleeding. Wow. So these are a big deal. Even, I have these in all my bags. 
anywhere I go. Yeah, where can you get um, these? So these, you can get these at a camping store where they're prepackaged, or you can get the powder. A lot of the powder stuff, you can just dump it into like a gunshot wound mm -hmm. and it'll it'll coagulate and clot wow. it up. And that you can get at like a tractor supply or a veterinary store, something like that. Meta Honey, I love this stuff. I put this on everything. It's good for burns, mm -hmm. and it's also good for, um, it's a natural antiseptic, so you can put it on your wounds. I don't like the triple antibiotic ointments. I think a lot of people do too much antibiotics, so I like to do the more natural route. So let's see, I got a marker to uh, mark wounds. Here's another big one. Tampons. Yeah, you have, yeah. So uh, gunshot wounds, put this in the wound yep. and it'll expand. Nosebleed, show it up the nose, yep. it'll expand. Um, so it's it's very good. Period, especially if you're on blood thinners. Yeah, yeah. Uh, scalpels, mm -hmm. again, if I have to uh, make an incision to reinflate your chest. This is, ma this is major medical. Uh, this awesome. is major. Um, another big bottle of aspirin, like I said, I have some aspirin in this small one. I like to have doubles of everything, mm -hmm. so if I have a buddy, hey, this dude's having a heart attack, okay, here's your aspirin. Yeah. Ace wraps, got three or four of those. IV fluids. This is normal saline. I wish I had LR, but they don't make LR in the 500 cc bags. Mm -hmm. So I just went with the normal saline. And really in a pinch, if you're in a trauma, you stop the bleed and replace the fluids. So it doesn't really matter what fluids you're gonna get. Right. At this point, we're just to stabilize. Uh, let's see, more IV fluids. Nice. Hydrogen peroxide, because I'm not mean like Johnny and I give you hydrogen peroxide <laughs> instead of alcohol. That burns you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, some more compression gauze, four by four gauze just to drain or uh, dress wounds. ABD pads. ABD pad is a non-adhering pad, so when you go to take it off, it doesn't rip. If it's mm -hmm. scabbed, it doesn't rip that scab off. So. And it really can absorb. Absorb it's a, a lot. It's a nice covering for a wound. Yeah, it's gauze large. is just going to saturate real quick. Yeah, and ABD can really hold absorb. some body fluid. Um, I got three space blankets in here. Cool. Some snacks. Especially if you're coming to somebody with a diabetic that's hypoglycemic yep. or yep. something. Yeah. Um, I, met, I was thinking about putting. So Johnson and Johnson baby wash. So if you have a large wound, um, I always carry a water bottle with me. So I'll dump some of this on the wound, um, and then this yeah. is kind of mean, but uh, take a toothbrush, scrub that wound okay. out, get the gravel out, and then dress it up. Uh, alcohol wipes, thermometer probes, like I said, ABD pads, and some hand warmers. Hand warmer, yeah. That is pretty much it in my kit. That is major medical. Yeah. That is that is a set yeah. of. <laughs> I I was looking for the intubation tube. Yeah. I, know, I, know every, I got everything but an ET tube. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people try to build their kits out to satisfy everyone and you're never going to be able to save everyone, let alone be able to treat everyone. Mm -hmm. So you have to build it as general as possible. So do a little bit of general overview of everything and then go from there. So. Okay, so if you guys haven't noticed the general theme of this, it's kind of build your medical kit to your context. And this Absolutely. is for anything. If you're building a go bag or a get home bag or a medic bag, or you wanting to put some tools in your truck, build it to your context. Correct. What are you going to use and what do you think you're going to come across? Because ounces are pounds and pounds is stress. If you don't need it, there's no point in carrying it. If you don't think you're going to come across it, don't carry it. Right. If you're out there and you don't know anything about first aid, you don't want to carry something like this if you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. You know, you want to help not make this situation worse. Exactly. I believe everyone should have some form of first aid, whether yeah. it's in your house or in your truck. There's been countless times that I've yeah. come up on an accident or a rollover that I've had to pretty much use everything in my pack and then mm -hmm. replace it. If I didn't have that, I couldn't have saved those lives out in the field. Absolutely. Yeah. ER nurses. I just want to say, nurses. as an ER nurse, how neat and tidy my kid is. This is. <laughs> yes, not, I will give her that. I know ICU thinks that we purposely tangle wires, and <laughs> but this was neat. It is. This is neat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I will give you that. Gen generally, uh, the stereotype is ICU nurses are very OCD and like all their lines in order, and ER nurses are like a tornado through a yeah. room. But that's not true with everyone. Yeah. I have my messy times. I mean, this I have not organized 
recognized this in a while because I just restocked it after mm -hmm. an accident. So this to me was very unorganized and it drives me nuts a little bit. But now that I've ripped everything out, I get to go through yeah. and organize it. All right, guys, that's going to be it for today's episode. If you have not checked out Johnny's Journey, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> We're going to put a link to their channel in our description below. So make sure and check them out. They got some awesome videos. And this is actually our first collab ever. And I believe it's yours too, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yeah, so, so this has been groovy fun. So yay for that. Until next time, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And then head on over to Instagram and follow us at Long Haul Life Series. See you guys in the comments below. Or in the... Nope, reshoot that one.